Hi everyone, today uh, I will show you how to run a two-way ANOVA test. Um, but before we can continue with the, the test itself and the code, um, it's best to explain our data set first. So we have been following uh, bank folds, individual bank folds, for a couple of weeks and we've monitored activity. And we assume that their activity depends on several factors. And one of these factors is whether it's day or night. So they are either nocturnal or diurnal. And also it may depend on uh, the abundance of predators in the environment, which can be low, can be high or intermediate as well. And we wanted to know whether or not uh, there were interactions between um, these explanatory factors on bankful activity. So before we start with uh, the two-way ANOVA, let's just take a look at the data first. What you can already do is load the library package because we'll need this. So we load this and then we uh, ask for the data set and take a look at the data set. So this is what the data looks like. We have 24 individual mice that we've been following. Then activity is a continuous variable, which is our uh, variable of interest. This is uh, the average activity of a mouse in minutes. And then predator density is a first fixed factor. So it was either high, so there were a lot of foxes and a lot of birds of prey in the area, or it was low, there was, so there was almost none uh, present. And then we also noted whether it was day or night, depending on uh, daylight. So what we want to know was whether activity of these bank falls was influenced by uh, both predator density and timing. And for that, two-way ANOVA is the perfect test to run. Before we can do the two-way ANOVA, uh, we'll have to just make sure that, um, that our factors have been identified as factors. So we can do that by running uh, the SDR code. Uh, so we do SDR and then we, we put my data in it. And let's take a look here at the bottom. So what we see is that activity uh, of Bankful has been um, defined as a numeric variable, which is okay. And then predator density and timing uh, have been identified as factors, which is also okay. If this was not the case, we would have to do it using this code. So we can uh, define a certain variable as a factor. So you should only do it if you find out that it has not been correctly identified. Normally, before we run a statistical model, we're going to check assumptions first. In this case, we're going to do it slightly differently. Um, so first we start with just visualizing the data because this is a very important step to actually know what's going on. We do this in this case with the ggpoopr um, library. If you don't have it, you can install it using this code. Make sure you have uh, the latest R version. This is quite important for this package. So let's ask, let's ask for the library and then we can plot uh, our data. And we just wait for a bit. Uh, and then this is what our data looks like. So on the Y axis, we have bankful activity in minutes. Then on the X axis, we have uh, the timing. So it's either day or it's night. And then here, uh, the blue color indicates high activity, the low color indicates low activity. So what we see just looking at this graph, it seems as if there is less bankful activity during the day in general. And also it seems that there is less activity in uh, areas of high predator density, which is the blue line. Maybe, but we can't know yet for sure, there could be an interaction effect because uh, if you look at this graph, we see that the difference between high and low predator density um, and the effect is much larger on activity during the night than during the day. So you see that the clustering of the data points is here is much closer than, than here. So there could be an interaction effect, but we'll have to test that. So this brings us to the actual two-way ANOVA. Um, for those who do not know, an interaction effect basically means that possibly the effect of one factor, so a fixed factor, in this case, this could be predator density, is dependent on another factor, or at least on the level of another factor. So that means that the effect of predator density on bankful activity 
could also be related to uh, timing. So whether it's day or night, we could see different patterns. And if this is the case, then uh, we assume that there's interaction effect. Now, this is the actual model. Uh, so it's quite simple. It's just a linear model where we plot activity against predator density. Then we put in a multiplication sign. This is very important because this multiplication sign um, indicates that we want to test for interaction. You can also put a plus, but if you would put a plus rather than the multiplication, then you would only be testing the main effects of predator density and timing. We don't want to do this. We want to have the interaction effect. So we run, uh, we build this model first. And then if we have the, the car package, we can do an ANOVA with this code. So here I defined the type as type three, but we're looking at the balanced design in our case, which means that we have equal group sizes. So if the group sizes are equal, uh, the type does not matter. It can be either one, two or three, but it doesn't matter. You'll get the same result. If you have an unbalanced design, this will change and you really have to think of which type you want to use. Anyway, if we, if we look at this uh, ANOVA model in down in the bottom, the first thing we want to look at is this. So is, this is the interaction effect, the interaction effect of predator density and timing. And here we have the p-value. And what we see is that the interaction effect is highly significant. So this means that the effect of our first fixed factor depends on uh, the level of the other fixed factor. So there is interaction. If there is interaction, uh, and this is what a lot of people do not understand, that it does not make any sense to just also look at the main effects uh, because the main effects no longer are meaningful. So we don't want to look at this p-values. We don't want to try to explain this because it no longer matters. The only thing we're interested in now is this. Because there is an interaction effect, then the main effects no longer are important. Now, now that we've run this model, um, we'll have to check the assumptions because you cannot just run a two-way ANOVA without checking assumptions. And a very important first assumption is that you need normal distribution of the model residuals. We can do that by just plotting the model and then we can ask for uh, plot type two, which is very simple code, as you can see. And what you then get is you get the normal quantile plots. What you want to see if you look at the normal quantile plots is that all these dots are actually on a straight line. Um, what we see is that there is some deviation at the extremes. Uh, so this may not be normally distributed. We can't tell for sure. It's not horrible, but it's not perfect either. So if we really want to make sure we can, on top of this, run a Shapiro test, which will test for normality uh, of, this, of these residuals using this code. And then we see that the p-value of the Shapiro-Wilk normality test is higher than 0.05, which means that it's probably normally distributed. So in this case, we can assume that the first assumption of normal distribution of the model residuals has been met. So this is already okay. Then a second assumption is uh, that the variance of the groups has to be homogeneous. So we can do that by plotting, uh, by requesting um, plot type one for the model, which actually puts the fitted values against residuals. And what you want to see is that the, the, the scatter, so the variance is equal um, between these groups. It seems to be the case if you want to make sure, just run a Levine test, which tests uh, equality of variance for this specific model. And the p-value, if you run it, has to be larger than 0.05. So this is the case. Uh, this is perfect. So these two assumptions have been met. So for now, we can assume that this model that we built, the two-way ANOVA model, is actually okay, we can use it. We don't have to transform our data. We don't have to go to uh, other model types. This is okay, we can do it. Then finally, uh, we'd also wanna do a post hoc test to see which groups are different. And if we have this interaction effect, then it doesn't make sense to just look at the main effects, as I said. But then you want to investigate all separate group combinations. In this case, we have four. For that, we have two packages that we want to use, uh, least square means, and Multicom view. So you can install these packages, uh, call for the libraries, wait a bit, and then we can do the postdoc test with this code. We'll, we'll, we'll do a tucky adjustment because uh, we have multiple comparisons. We have four groups. This is quite important. 
we can interpret this table that we get at the bottom, but I suggest to just add this code as well, which makes it much, much easier. Um, and this is the final output that we want to look at. So what we see here is that our high predator density area uh, and a factor timing, in this case day, is compared to, for example, uh, low predator density area during the day, etc., etc. But what you want to look at is this, the, the A, A, B, B, and C, because this indicates whether there's a significant difference between groups. So what we see is that the predator density, for example, uh, in the low predator density area during the night, this activity of bank falls uh, deviates from the other groups because there's a C and the other groups have different, uh, well, they have either A or B. But then if you look at, for example, an area of low predator density during the day, we see A, B, which means that um, activity of bank falls is similar to a high predator density area during the day and also similar to a high predator density during the night. So this one does not differ from the first group and the third group. So that's how you can interpret it. Um, and then you can also, if you want, you can uh, put the A, B, C on top of the plot that we've created uh, in the beginning. So then you know which groups are different, uh, and what you want to report in the paper is that there is a significant interaction effect. So you're not going to look at the main effects. Now, assume that there was no uh, interaction effect, then we have to rerun the model. Um, and I'll explain how to do this in the second part of this tutorial.